Welcome to Virginia Union University's Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology weekly service of worship and prayer in Coburn Hall inside the Alex Bledsoe James Memorial Chapel. Welcome. And I say thanks for the things you have done for me. Things so undeserved, yet you prove to give your love for me. Voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude all that I am and ever hold text this morning comes from the eighth chapter of the book of Romans, verse 31. Words uh, similar to these may be found in any of the translations. I'm reading from the New King James translation. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Let us pray. God, we thank you for how you've given us this opportunity to share with your people a word that we feel comes from the Lord. Bless each one of those who are listening in and looking in on this day of worship, that each person may be lifted and sifted and blessed in the way they need to be blessed. Send your word, Lord, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. We thank you, amen. I want to speak today on the subject, just 
another thing, just another thing. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This text really confronts directly the challenges of our time, uh, the challenges of the pandemic that we all are experiencing now, the political unrest, the upheaval in our world, even the environmental crisis that we are facing because of recklessness on the part of many of our people. And so on today, I want to share with you the fact that even though the world may not know it, there's something that we know that they are not completely aware of. We know something that the world has not taken seriously. And that is we have a hope unknown to the unbeliever. Even now, we have great things to look forward to because what we are going through now uh, is nothing but one more thing that God would take us through, just another thing. Things of some sort are always happening. How we respond to these things indicates whether our relationship with our God is still operative or not. When our relationship with God is still healthy, our response will include a comment, a commitment, and even a new commencement. This particular scripture speaks to these ideals that are outgrowths of our faith in God. Everything we face when we trust God is just another thing. God has brought us through many things. This is just one more thing that God is gonna bring us through. If we cooperate with our own faith and with each other, in our prayer lives, certainly we can handle whatever comes our way. This text indicates three things I want to lift up for us to share on today. The first part of the verse says, what then shall we say to these things? This indicates to us that a comment is solicited. What shall we say? Yeah, we know other folks are saying negative things. Other folks are creating all kinds of news bites, trying to discourage the whole world that somehow we have to bend our knee to the idols of prosperity and other things that take the place of our real faith in God. What then shall we say to these things, both positive and negative experiences, good times and bad times. What is your testimony? Has God done anything for you lately? Has God brought you through anything? Do you have a word to share with our brothers and sisters who are up against it uh, round through these days? What is it that we can say to help people go for another day? Certainly, there ought to be some comment from the community of believers, those of us who are part of the walking with God that we have experienced along the way should have a testimony if nobody else does. I heard our grandparents say, the Lord has brought us from a mighty long way. And where the Lord has brought us from, we know the Lord didn't bring us this far to leave us now. A comment is solicited by this text. What shall we say? Not just me, not just one, not just the big shots, not just folks in authority. What shall we say as a community to these things? How will we respond? Will we be faithful? or will we be reckless? And certainly during the pandemic, we have seen a lot of reckless behavior. During this pandemic, we've seen a lot of folks even deny the validity of scientific research. But what shall we say? Are we gonna stand for the truth? Or are we going to be taken in by the lies that are publicized every day from executive authorities in our country? A comment is solicited. The second thing that I want to help us with comes from the second part of the verse where it says, if God be for us. This is a conditional statement. If God is 
for us. A commitment, in other words, is alluded to. First, we have a comment. Then the comment ought to be followed by a commitment. Do you believe? that God is on your side? Do you believe that God is the one who's brought you this far? Are you willing to commit through your lifestyle and through the way that you treat others around you to give an indication that there's a difference between the way a believer behaves even in the midst of what we are going through right now? The statement assumes an action. If, if God is for us, what are you going to do? The presupposition of faith is that we know God is involved. This is not a statement of doubt. This is not a statement, uh, but this is a statement of fact, not a statement of fear. My faith claims support from God, and God's uh, continuing presence gives me the assurance that this that I'm experiencing right now it's just another thing. It's another episode where I can experience the power of God that takes me from point A to point B and S will even take me all the way. It is an indication of God's intention. God has something better than the bitterness of my present circumstance and there's something on the other side that will give me the kind of feeling that God wants me to experience even now. A commitment is solicited. A, a, a comment is, is alluded to. And lastly, a commencement is expected. Who can be against us? That's the question that comes to all of us today. Are we feeling helpless and weak along the way? Do we feel as if we can do nothing about our situation? Have we decided that we're going to sit out uh, this election cycle? Have we decided we're going to throw in the towel and give in to the forces around us uh, that are trying to destroy us? The conclusion of the believer is, uh, I anticipate a new beginning. A believer is not finished just because someone announced this his or her demise. God has something better, but we must be willing to start by taking the first step. You are not at the end of the journey, but every step along the way gets us closer to experiencing the fullness of God's promise. What's happening now is not all that is. There is more to come after this. The indication of the text is that nothing can separate us from God's love with all of its benefits. Yes, I know that there's something better on the way. I know we'll come out of this all right. And whether or not all of us survive it, we know that God always has a remnant. And if you are faithful over a few things, the promise is he'll make your manager over much more. Faith allows me to claim whatever God has determined to be mine. And if it's mine, I want to be here to receive it. My new venture begins now. I must hold on to the love that is grounded in faith, that I might not betray that which God has already placed within my heart. I'm going to love like God wants me to love, live like God wants me to live, and I'm going to be sure to hold on to the faith that will take me through this thing. This is just another thing. Yes, what then shall we say to these things? It's just another thing. If God is for us, who can be against us? Yes, what we are going through right now is just a prelude to what we will receive later on. It's not just a time for me to give up or to throw in the towel. It's time for me to get ready for the next round. Even if I'm knocked down, I know I'm not knocked out. And even if the count gets to nine, God will get me ready to stand on my feet before they count me out. 
Be not dismayed. God is with us. God stands beside us and even lives within us. We used to sing an old song in this church I came up in, Another Day That the Lord Has Kept Me. He has kept me from all evil with my mind stayed on Jesus. Recently, I heard our male chorus at the church I pastor sing this song. He brought me through this, and he brought me through that. And somehow, I've got to make this journey somehow. Satan's on my track trying to turn me back, but I've got to make this journey somehow. My mentor and the one who taught me a lot about how to live for the Lord, uh, Bishop James Ferguson Brown of the Mount Sinai Holy Church of America, brought a song back from one of his trips when he sang in the pulpit, Get back, Satan, I'm running late. Get back, Satan, I'm running late. Got to get to heaven before they close the gate. Get back, Satan, I'm running late. You won't stop me from gaining another victory because in my faith walk with God, this is just another thing. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, as we continue to believe that God will bring us through this and that because this is just another thing.
We hope that you've enjoyed this week's worship services. May the grace and the love and peace of God be with you.